Now, a woman, I don't know how she got my number, sent me a message. Say, I'm this person. My condition is that I'm paralyzed halfway. And this thing started so, so time. Someone said you could help. So I got your number and I sent you this message. Then I went to God and said, I put the, the message before you. I said, Since when? <laughs> At what time did I become a miracle worker? Where was it published? On which newspaper was it? Punch or Vanguard that I had strange abilities to heal people. And I asked God to give me something to tell the woman. For the first day, nothing dropped. We came for prayers. I went back. There was nothing to tell the woman. She now sent me a text again. You say I should call back now. I said, it's a human being that told you that you should call back now. And that human being is telling you to come back tomorrow. Because the one that you want to hear has not come. You know, I, I like to be very sincere because I'm not in charge, you know. If you, are still, if you still have flesh at work in you, 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 are, you are likely to give false hope and say, oh no, I have a cure. Glory. God will leave you on stage. <laughs> so I told her that the great one had not yet come. Then the second day again, I told her he didn't come. Then the third day, I was about telling her, he has not come when my eyes opened. Then I saw that she was fighting with a man on about a land. And that man charmed her. Then I now typed. Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. Now, if you go to your village, hallelujah, maybe your village is founded on 12 families. And the original families that founded the village, there was an agreement that they made. An agreement that they, they are under oath only to pass the intent, the scope of the agreement to the eldest person coming after them. So there's a particular age that the first son gets to and then his father begins to intimate him of the agreement that was made that is binding on everybody that you are seeing and for 112 generations that agreement has been passed from generation to generation and that agreement is the reality that governs the life of people in that community when they talk about those things they don't talk about them in the market sometimes they wait in the night and then they enter the forest to discuss issues that have to do with that covenant so when we are talking covenant talk is not baby talk is for elders. In fact, there are several proverbs that have been concocted in order to preserve the secrets of covenant, just in case we need to speak about it in the town. We speak it with we speak about it with proverbial languages, so that someone that has not been initiated into the court that he carries the burden of the covenant will not even be able to hear. His, his ears are not trained to understand covenant language. Hallelujah. You might find two elders sitting under a hut and they're saying, Kai, there's cold oh, these days. Oh. We need just two firewood to bring heat. And then you, a normal, a, a mundane man that doesn't understand covenant language, we think you will rush and go and bring firewood. You do not know that there are deeper matters. What the elder is saying is that the spirit on the altar is crying, and this kind of cry, the volume, haven't been assessed. It will take two lives to satisfy this cry and give them some space of about three years to rest. Covenant language is deep language. It's not for strangers. You need to be initiated in order for you to be given access to understand the secrets of covenant. So just in case, at any point in time, the lecture becomes so difficult for you to understand, it means you have been far away from your father's home. And that's why the, the proverbs in the household are a strange saying to you. Now, if you know humanity at all, you will know that humanity is insufficient. Now, many of us, many young ladies, like this my friend here, when you got married initially, you felt your husband was very all-sufficient then you'll now be faced with a reality, a discovery, that the way you are expecting him to operate, he seems not to have the capacity to operate like that. Now, the reason is because we are all insufficient. That expectation you have belongs to God. You should expect God. It's only God that can satisfy that expectation that you have, not human beings. Human beings are insufficient. But El Shaddai is the sufficient. And then another meaning of El Shaddai means the strong, the strong, the strong, the strong, the sufficient, the almighty. The strong, the sufficient, and what? Have you ever been in a situation, maybe one person died in the family, and after two weeks, another person died, it was as if the whole family was porous to attack, and you wish you were stronger. It's not, humanity is weak. That state of weakness that you just discovered by those two deaths, is just a revelation of your reality that you have sustained all this while. You were that weak, but you did not know because there was no event to unveil it. I was speaking with a friend today and he is into politics in a particular strange place. The place is strange and the politicians from there are very strange. I'm talking about a place where politics is not according to census and polling, it's not according to PVCs and voters' motivation. 
in fact there is a man contesting in that place right now that uh, because he has come out it's very likely that one of the aspirants looking for the same office might not make it before that time just because it <coughs> things die when he comes out things die and when they traced it his father was also a delete master <laughs> his father was excellent in deleting men in fact i heard that the elders had to be called together called together and the paramount ruler of of that tribe had to curse the man for his father to die so he became a menace they had to go and consult other demons in high places the ones beyond the one the man was operating with to ask for his death he was a petition <laughs> hallelujah but do you know what if god listen to me if god you, you i think you know what <laughs> if god should tell you that you should go and contest in that place and you decide to obey him irrespective of the fact that you are aware that the place is a danger zone that's when you will know that there is a personality called the strong a day comes when the thing that kills people lacks the ability to kill a certain man it is not because the man oh, spiritual people know that when you have that kind of strength and defense it is not because of your humanity just because you have contacted something that has the antidote for the dimensions of plagues that have been designed to bring you injury so, so it means that what is strong about you is not you. It's the altar that supports your manifestation. You see, the life of a mortal man is a mundane life that is characterized by insufficiencies, by limitations, by struggles, that inabilities. And that's the reason why you will need a support system that doesn't have the ailments and the insufficiencies of your natural orientation. And that's the reason why we need to come into covenant so that our covenant partner can swallow up all our insufficiencies and in him we can do all things because it's available to strengthen us. Exactly. Now humanity was de designed as a creature of covenant and that's why the best thing that you are good at is insufficiency. And just in case you feel because you made a 2-1 in physics in Benue State University that on the strength of that your, your, your academic prowess you can make a headway in life. Hallelujah. It is when you are 39 years old, you might find out that there are several factors that have held that your degree down such that it, there were several quarters that, that you could finish from university. It was enough. It was a case. It was a spiritual case. And because of that, they have taken that certificate. And one of the memories in the region, they put it on the altar. As long as that certificate is before that memory, take it to First Bank. Take it to Afri Bank. Take it to to Zenibar. It's not of him that will it. Not him that run it. It is what? Of God that shows mercy. So what that scripture means is that your natural effort will not strike a chord anywhere. It is the support system that supports your willingness and your actions that can translate those your mundane efforts into something that strikes a chord of possibility. Now do you know every time you walked in the flesh, you walked in your human wisdom, you walked by your own ability. Every time it was because you had not yet embraced the revelation of the El Shaddai. And if he wants to help you, that your attempt will fail woefully. It means he's teaching you something. That is the one that went there to frustrate it. Because if he allows you to succeed in such a matter, you will hang on that success and that success will be your God. So he will make sure you are frustrated. Some of the frustrations you experience is not because you don't need deliverance. Because suddenly someone will go and enroll for a deliverance. This thing. And say, Meanwhile, he is not yet perfect in the revelation of what? The El Shaddai. Think of your life. Anything that has lingered, it is because whenever you had the opportunity, there was still little life in you. You were trying to use it to fulfill prophecy. Meanwhile, as we saw in the last lecture, is it yesterday? Nobody has the power to bring any prophecy to pass. Nobody. I've seen people before that men of God prophesied to. You are going to settle down today, this year. You are going to settle down. And they believed. Only for the damsels to now be making way making way to settle down making way making way making way and then god will because he loves you now make sure that after you make way they break you know that that thing on facebook as if whatsapp there's a broken heart divided the person that designed that logo has an experience <laughs> you are maneuvering you are maneuvering you are maneuvering it, your maneuver is because you have not yet known the air shadow you are not perfect and there are many things that the lord will not commit to you it's available but it's not going to be committed to you because you have not yet fulfilled the fundamental requirement. And it is when you are dead, you are totally weaned from activities in the flesh that you now show your life is a revelation of the fact that there is one Esha guy that spoke to me and I will wait for him. Yes, there are opportunities, but me, my own contact is not with opportunities, it is with what? With 
He said, when you have come to that point, I will now open the package that I have in my bag, the package of covenant. I will open it and then I will contract a covenant with you. Because if I bring this covenant to you, when you have not yet perfected this revelation, you will make a mockery of the covenant. And your life itself will not be secure. Because you don't know what it means to keep a covenant with the spirit being. There are several laws in your village that you don't know where it came from. But they are ancient covenants. And if you see, there are some people that are more afraid of Aleku than anything in this world. Because they know that Aleku doesn't have patience. They know. The guy might be a senator somewhere speaking on the floor. If after he finishes a very charismatic delivery on the floor and then add Aleku now calls him and say, that thing you said, you have to come home. The idol is talking. And the place we kept your picture, the picture has stood up. It means... <laughs> It means you, have no, you are not perfect before the idol come. Walk down. Walk down. Walk down. It's when we begin to assess the life of the average Christian, you see hypocrisy. You see lies. Meanwhile, the El Shaddai is waiting. He's waiting for you to mature in the revelation he has presented. Yeah, will, you, will you stop the action, the activity in the flesh, so that God can give you his omnipotent dimension? I hope you know the scripture says that, that, that humanity is insufficient. What do you consider your limitation to be? Lack of money? Uh, if, you, if that is your limitation. Be, yeah. be frank, okay. Lord, the only people that need money this year, there are two of them at the back. <laughs> is there a financial? Okay, according to the doctrine of El Shaddai, Every limitation in your life, God allowed it so that it will become an entry point for you to know the El Shaddai. If your limitations and your weaknesses and your insufficiencies do not lead you deeper into the understanding of the strong, the breasted one, the one that sustains all, it means that there is something else that is your emphasis other than the solution that God is making available. Sometimes before I come to preach, I have to pray for four hours. The reason is because there is no message. I went to preach in Enugu. It was a miracle service. I had no message. And I told them, bring the sick, bring all kinds of affliction. God will heal. And then, no message. And the way God sends me to people is that he gives me a message. If he gives me a message, it means every other thing is guaranteed. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed for five hours. And there was no message. <sighs> we came to the church and we came very early. I prayed, 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 I prayed. And then, a small message. When I began on that small message, it started becoming big. Because the El Shaddai has come. I was waiting for him to give me a sign. Because when he gives a sign, it means, do, do that thing that you're doing. Move out. So he gave me a sign. People that know the El Shaddai, they don't move first. They allow him to move. Then they follow. Because this, this container is weak. It doesn't have the ability to deliver. But if you know the El Shaddai, you allow him to move first. And when you move, you follow behind. And then human beings will be seeing you. They don't know it's the El Shaddai. Because it goes beyond the limitations of humanity. There are, there are things about you that I don't know. But the El Shaddai can whisper them. In him, I have all sufficiency. In him, I have no limitation. In him, I have no weakness. And that's why Paul could say, I can do all things. Because he has perfected the revelation of God as the El Shaddai. Now, before you quote that scripture and say, I can do all things, wake up. The last time there was little pressure, you took off in the flesh like a tornado. You built a, an edifice of defense in your own wisdom, hoping to hold back what is coming. And that edifice you built was your undoing because the El Shaddai was standing right by you, but you could not see him. Your flesh and your human wisdom was more tangible to you than what the El Shaddai was offering. Sixteen men rose up. Sixteen. And what they were trying to do was to put me into trouble. Sixteen men. I was in sleep when the El Shaddai revealed it. I woke up and said, battle again, battle. So I started fasting. They had three months to strike and they did not succeed in three months. Because what was working was more than a man. It was the El Shaddai. And on the day I now appeared before the 16 men, they ran away. That's the real day now that I was now on ground. I was around. They took me. It was not me they saw. It was the El Shaddai. So wise men have already valued their insufficiency and they know that it will not survive the Amatara. They have decided to walk with the El Shaddai. And so God told him, walk down before me and be thou perfect. It's after that I will cut a covenant with you. Do you know what? We need a man of covenant to stand in your family. It's only when that man of covenant arises 
that the covenants that existed before the man showed up will lose their grip on the entire landscape. In the days of Jacob, he ran home with a staff and then he entered into a transaction with the El Shaddai. Even though at that time, he was not yet born again. Uh, he came to God and negotiated his salvation. He said, if you, if you keep me in this place that I'm going, you put clothes on my body, on my back, right? If you ensure that there's no challenge and you bring me back again, I will become your man. <laughs> I, will, I will enlist. Because at that time, he was God, Jehovah was God of Abraham and Isaac. He was not God of Jacob. The guy didn't want, he, he was, he was a bubbling guy. He didn't want the ways of his ancestors. But he said, I don't know. Now I'm, I'm, I don't have access to my ATM card. I'm, I'm all alone here. So if by any means you can show up and make all these things happen, it's likely that I will submit to you. Hallelujah. You know what? As carnal as that prayer was, if Jacob was wiser than many people. At least it was El Shaddai he went to and said, he knew he was insufficient in himself. And then he went to El Shaddai and said, can you take care of my clothing? Have you ever prayed like that and you believed that prayer? Can you take care of my limitation? See now, the people that are paying my school fees, they have died. Can you? He likes that kind of prayer. When your eyes, the distraction has been removed and you can see he's designed to help insufficiency. If you can present a request and say, see my challenge, can you show up? Can you? Ah, the guy had not yet accepted him to be his God. In the name of the transaction that his ancestors had with him, he made that request. And by the time he came back, you would discover that God answered much more than the guy requested. And he was already two bands by the time he came back. And by the time he came back, he didn't want to keep his promise. It was an angel that was watching over him. Say, you won't pass here until that dedication that you promise will be made. Because before you pass this place, you promise us. And now that you want to pass over, we must ensure that you are in a state of surrender. They fought. Hallelujah. That, I, I don't have time to explain the kind of fight. Because they fought till they break. Is that true? The question is, why did they fight? Because when the fight was about to end, what happened was that God touched him. The angel what? Touched. So couldn't the angel have touched him in the morning? Why did he wait? They were struggling. Because the man's flesh was still strong. He still believed he had some moves. And the angel allowed him. He was still, those, that's the strength of the flesh. When he exhausted all his moves, he touched him. In the office, when we are given an assignment, and the assignment is impossible to achieve, I asked the Holy Ghost, what is the way out in this matter? I always ask him. Then he floods my mind with ideas on how to go about it. That is when I will now discover that the people that ask the question, they actually don't know how the answer looks like. They are waiting for a smart person to come up with a format on how it can be tackled. Then they adopt that format and say, hey, this is, this is the way it's supposed to be. The people asking the questions don't know the answers. I ask the Holy Ghost, help. You see, many of us in our work with God, we are so full of ourselves that we do not understand how to draw power from the Holy Ghost that is resident in us. You see, the reason is because you don't acknowledge that you are insufficient, that you are, you are limited. God will go at length to bring you to a point for you to understand that you are limited. And if it has not yet come to you as a revelation that you have limitations, it means you are not likely to master how to walk with God and to enjoy his supply. Because only men that acknowledge their limitations can take advantage of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the Spirit, he is designed to help our infirmities. There is a limitless reason why you will always need to seek God and that reason is because of your obvious infirmities. And the Spirit of God is designed to help them. So, in any area that you allow the Holy Spirit the opportunity by acknowledging your insufficiency, you have actually mobilized him to bring help to you. But in areas that you feel that you are most competent, he will stay out of your way because you are a master of that field. The extent to which you can see Spirit's help is the degree to which you acknowledge your infirmities and your limitations hallelujah today in that area of your limitation that area that you, you have tried in your wisdom and it has failed can you go back to him and ask him show me what to do and stay in that prayer with fasting show me what to do show me what to do 
Only a man that acknowledges his limitation can pray that kind of prayer. There are several prayers that only people that acknowledge that they are weak can pray. But as long as you are strong, you don't need God's help. And it's obvious that uh, the average believer is so strong these days. And so the help of God is far. But people that have been able to appropriate the help of God again and again and again are men that understand how limited they are. For about five years now, the, my major prayer point is help me, Lord. Yes. That is the one that I put to English language. It's not more than help me because I found out I'm, I'm a bundle of infirmities. When I check this area, I say, God, God. I check that area, I say, oh my. It, it, ah, I see shame is coming. Shame is already on the way. It's nothing. Help me. And I pray desperately. Then he comes and then he whispers. His voice of commitment and his voice of covenant. Now don't worry, I have taken care of this aspect. I've taken care of this aspect. Then I will roll on the ground and roll and give him glory. And then when I come out, somebody will see me and say, you are a wise man who see me. You are solving problems. As if only you knew how I was rolling on the ground. I acknowledge the fact that I was born with infirmities. In fact, most normal men have better right standing than myself. So I need to go and hide. And the extent to which you place demands on me will actually come out of an acknowledgement of your insufficiency. If I see the way you are praying, because somebody came the other day, I saw him close to this side, put his hand in the pocket, and his, his tongues were computer tongues. Computer. You. <laughs> I look. I look. <laughs> so I knew that his own flight would be in the night. <laughs> oh, I, I, he was a bundle of sufficiency. Maybe he was telling God his achievement. I have two cars parked. I just got a master's degree. You know. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Oh my. Second. 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 <laughs> the spirit. <laughs> he said, walk down before me and be thou. What? <laughs> you must have known. No human being knows how to work miracles. The miracle worker is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, and the spirit, the spirit walking with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. Following. That's how I discovered how to minister with signs. First of all, I need to receive his word from him. Not my own, but his own. Then when I go to deliver his own, he is compared to come and what? Confirm his word with Ah, I said, glory. So, my greatest challenge as a minister, and I've been ministering for long, is that I don't, it's very difficult for me to have a message. I know you get messages supernaturally, and maybe you think I'm a star, I'm a professional, and I just come open the scriptures and it burns. It's my wife I normally complain to. No message. And she too, she said, it's coming. See, she does not message. No message. Sometimes I have to trek on the road. You would think I'm trekking. I'm not trekking. I'm looking for the message. So, I'm trying to humble myself by trekking. Maybe that will please him. And they will say, okay. The more insufficient you feel, the more of his help you can get. Yes. The reason why you are like this, you are sufficient. Your trouble has not yet brought you to an acknowledgement of the fact that you are incapable. May the troubles multiply until it gets you to a point where you say, oh boy, this thing knows the walk. He knows the walk. It was designed to crash so that you will look for the Holy Ghost. He's the one that helps infirmity. He was designed to crash. On the road, like that. On the road. On the road. I will pray, 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 pray. Sit somewhere. Somebody will say, Kai, he the first. He the first. You see, there's no way you can understand the transaction that I have with God just by seeing me. But you see, the entire process is tied to a very deep sense of insufficiency. A deep sense of insufficiency. I stood on the crusade ground without a message, and that, that's the one that kills on the crusade ground. He crowd, big crowd. People that knew me, they stood up and they said, ah! Meanwhile, I say, please don't look at them. You know me and you. There's a problem. They say, ah. <laughs> I was going to the altar, and then they now brought protocol, protocol, and the protocol were trying to do as if they are doing something. I didn't. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was with Tati Simon. I was just saying, where are you? The protocol, they were, if you come close, they were, In the crowd, and say, I traveled all the way from Benin to come. I came from Benin. The, the little Holy Ghost I was already transacting with when they said that one, Holy Ghost left, and my, my problems multiply. Now, I want to, I want to. Have you really discovered that you are inadequate? Have you discovered it? Has it come to you as a revelation? Oh, if not, your life is not about to change. Your life is not about to change. Meanwhile, I must tell you, I was one of the people that felt I was most sufficient than other men. 
Yes, I was not born like this. I felt I was a star. A luminary. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. You can't understand. I felt I was the last scholar on earth. Until the things in which my confidence was based, they could not deliver in the day of trouble. Then I knew that I was living in deception. From that day, I knew I needed God. If it has not yet come to you, your life is not about to change. The only way it will change is how I'm telling you. As I was moving. Meanwhile, I didn't know he took note of every time I sighed and I waited for his presence. I waited. I waited. By the time I got to the pulpit, everybody stood up. I mean, thousands of people. I was still looking for him. If you see a man that knows Jehovah, you will know when he's looking for him. He can forget about his vehicle, his cell phone, his laptop, and he's on the street. If you're asking, why are you here? He has no physical reason to tell you why he's trekking. But he's searching for God. A friend of mine, he didn't know how he labeled and he entered some farmer's farm. So when the farmers came in the morning, we told him, a man with Albada in the farm. He didn't look right. But there was no way he could explain himself. There was no way. Whether the farmers went back and said, this pastor, don't they do something? No. That's their business. But he's looking for what? For something. That's a level of helplessness. The spirit helped. What? Anything God needs to do to you this year that will make your infirmities plain to you, it, you will become conscious that you cannot contend with these infirmities by your wisdom. Anything He will do to you to bring you to that level is what will be the trigger for your greatness. There is greatness, but only the Holy Ghost can find it. The journey begins by an acknowledgement of the fact that you are insufficient. He, he can make you shine. He can make you shine. You want to shine? Die first. Die. Look for Him. Uh, die to your strength and look for him. He will make you shine in the brightest colors. The kind of honor you can't give yourself. I think you are proud because you believe you have honor. You don't have it yet. The type you cannot give yourself, God will give you when you acknowledge that you don't have what it takes to prosecute your destiny. The first thing that you need to know, if you're going to walk with the El Shaddai, who is the all-sufficient, the helper of infirmity, if you're going to walk with him, it must come to you as a revelation that I am what? Insufficient. As long as you have not come there, you are likely to walk in the flesh. There's an alternative that is still at your disposal that you are going to exploit instead of falling before the Lord. When somebody comes and says, oh, there is a problem, pastor, the person doesn't know that pastor is insufficient. And if you start counseling people, you will now begin to discover how insufficient you are. These guys have physical problems, they have tangible problems, and you are totally incapacitated in bringing solutions to them. You know this is a curse that is operating in this person's life. You know this is, this, is a, this is a cyclical situation. Somebody programmed something and that thing is working. You know this one, this one is uh, it's because of land disputes that they are attacking this person. Well, you, you, you can read the trend because you are experienced, you have seen such cases. So you know, you can trace where it's coming from. But you, you can't do anything about it except you find help. Now a woman, I don't know how she got my number, sent me a message. Say I'm this person. My condition is that I'm paralyzed halfway and this thing started so so time someone said you could help so i got your number and i sent you this message i say then i went to god and said i put the, the message before you I said, since when <laughs> at what time did i become a miracle worker where was it published on which newspaper was it punch or vanguard that i had strange abilities to heal people and i asked god to give me something to tell the woman for the first day, nothing dropped. We came for prayers. I went back. There was nothing to tell the woman. She now sent me a text again. He said, I should call back now. I said, it's a human being that told you that you should call back now. And that human being is telling you to come back tomorrow. Because the one that you want to hear has not come. You know, I, I like to be very sincere because I'm not in charge, you know. If you, are still, if you still have flesh at work in you, 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 are, you are likely to give false hope. And say, oh no, I have a cure. Glory. God will leave you on stage. <laughs> So I told her that the great one had not yet come. Then the second day again, I told her he didn't come. Then the third day, I was about telling her, he has not come when my eyes opened. Then I saw that she was fighting with a man on about a land. And that man shamed her. Then I now typed. I said, I see you in contention with a man about land matters. And the man shamed you. He said, she doesn't remember. And I said, okay, the Lord will bring it to your memory. One hour later, I came and saw again. She had sent a text. Pastor! Instro, I've been fighting. <laughs> I'll be fighting. 
and see, I now saw that the great one was already involved. Do you understand? Because he brought the revelation. So on the strength of the revelation, this night, when I go back, I'm going to pray. A simple prayer. And then she'll get healed. Because the great one arose. He's the one that gave me the revelation. Right? And since I didn't have time to pray yesterday, today I have time. And when I begin to pray, he will still use my prayer as a means of reaching out to the woman because he started the process by what? Giving a revelation. If you have not yet acknowledged your inadequacy, you are not about to go far with God. I don't know how best to drive this matter. Do you know who has taken your name to a particular place to see how to bring injury into your life? Do you know the forces that have been marshaled against your destiny? And that's why we need to know how to keep in step with the Almighty God. There are many pressures that will come your way and the devil will bring alternatives on how to handle those matters. And it's very likely that you will subscribe to the devil's solution to those matters if you have not yet come to a point where you say, it is only God that will solve my problem. Are you with me? He sees that you had options, but you decided to stay with him. It means that you wanted to do business with him. He's excited. The next thing he will test you with is, when you start praying, he won't answer first. To see whether you could get discouraged and then change the plan. You know he's in charge. He decides when he sets up. He decides what he does. You may cry, cry, cry. Cry will not move you. And then when you stay there, as if there's no answer, will you consider another option, another alternative? If you, if you say no for me, oh, even if he slays me, yet I will seek him. So he knows that, okay, you don't have any other God to turn to. It's only him that you have. All right. Once that is guaranteed, he will show you a sign. This is how God operates with his people. Sometimes, in, in order to answer your prayer, what you will do is just say, um, take 200,000 to this person. Now, you're not asking, I'm asking you for this. You, you don't know that that obedience is a proof that he is your God. He just wants to, a manifestation of faith from your life that proves that he is actually your God. He can control you. He can tell you what to do. You are not the one in charge. Take 200,000. Give that system. And then, things will trigger. Sometimes, the trigger that will open the answers to your prayer is a simple obedience that God will require. Meanwhile, when I begin to pray, when I begin to pray, normally, this is my own experience, God will say, go and give somebody this vehicle. And you know what? When God begins to respond, he will give me that same vehicle but a better model. That same year. This is the dealing of God on my, on my life. Now, let your ears be open. God has many ways of answering prayer. For me, if he wants to answer a great prayer, he will say, go and give something. Six months later, he will answer that thing I requested for and more. Your insufficiency becomes a motivation behind your prayer life. Prayer opens you up to God. The response to prayer can be an instruction. The response to prayer can be an information. God gives you an information that you didn't have before. Maybe the reason why people are in bondage in your family. It shows you. There is always a supernatural response that God gives to prayer. You might be battling a thing, battling a thing. God will just say, stand up in the morning. Take this. Go here and give it. That giving, that obedience becomes the trigger that will release God. I was praying and fasting on my birthday. And God said, go and take this amount. Go to that preacher. Give it. When he told me that, then somebody called me and said, that same preacher, he wants to buy something. And it's remaining to so so amount. I said, my own. The preacher bought that thing. But God told me first. Before I even heard that there was a need. I sent it there. The kind of things God has said I should give from my birthday to today. Is much. Is much. That's how I know that a year is powerful. When God begins to say, go to this place. Some of the people he said I should sow to. Some of them are my children spiritually. You know, some people, I don't know whether I got that uh, law that... You don't give. No, you see, God is the father of us all. Some of them, he said, go and meet them. Give them this. Do that. Do like this. It's prayer. That thing I'm doing is his prayer. The prayer I prayed with my mouth, and then there's a prayer I'm praying with my giving. Then when I finish doing all those things, then he will stop instructing me. I am powerful. You can't destroy me. Because I have obeyed the Lord. Now, we must understand how the answers to prayer comes in your life. For me, most often, it comes in a directive to give. How does it come to you? When I obey him, then he begins to walk. 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 The way doors open, you begin to wonder, how did this door open? 
this door. Before I came here, somebody called me from another country. What happened? He said, he had been hearing my message in the morning. One called me and said, he couldn't sleep all night. I said, I'm ready to bind the demon. He said, it's not the demon, it's your message. What? Hallelujah. Every, God can go to South Africa and make somebody not to sleep so that the person can meet your needs. I've seen that before. Nations, wake somebody up. He said, I could not sleep. I could not sleep. I was hearing your name. At least today, as of today, I've heard three people that my name came to them in their dream. One lady from Zimbabwe, she says she was sleeping. And an old man came and told her, go and look for Arome Osai. Look for him. She woke up. The name was Claire. She wrote it down, went on the internet, Googled, and thank God our brethren are doing a great work, putting our things online. She saw one of my tapes. She clicked it, and she entered into tears. Seriously. Another guy, the guy I just finished talking with now, how did he know me? It was in a dream, too. Somebody came and, hey, why is it that your own name is forgotten? <laughs> Nobody knows it. Even if, when you take the name and go on air, on channel, say, I am here! Nobody watched that night. Ah, what happened? Your infirmities have covered you. There is nothing that God cannot do, but you need to empty yourself before you fill you up. Are you ready to work with God? That's the question. Are you really ready to work with Him? Or you just want to do play games around? Working with God will cost you. It will cost you something. If anybody made you think that working with God was there are several times you are going to cry because you are working with God. And after crying, you will not be comforted. He will leave you in that state. Yes. And the reason why you are in that state is because you are working with him. He said you should do something. And that thing is, is dead. It's killing you. He has to kill you first before he will make you alive. And you need to be told what to expect on the part of working with God. Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and we are on Twitter. Thank you.